I've noticed lately that some people online seem to be a little bit confused about what compatibility means in terms of Tales of the Valiant and D&D 5e. So Tales of the Valiant is a, or TOV, is a tabletop role-playing game developed by Cobalt Press, replacing D&D 5th edition. The game is fully compatible with 5e, meaning that you can use content from any 5e book in your Tales of the Valiant game. It does not mean everything in Tales of the Valiant is suitable as a one-for-one -one replacement in 5th edition. So in other words, it's moving forward, even though it reserves space for what came before it. Compatibility can be confusing. It's easy to think that compatible means the same, and then if that's not what it means, then you might think, well, why not just make a completely different game? Well, here are three important reasons why there's a lot of value to compatibility in gaming. Reason one, compatible means you get extra content. You might find that you can play 6th edition D&D content with just a 5e rulebook, but it's still not clear that third-party publishers are invited to participate. The post-6th edition world is likely to be mostly Wizards of the Coast content, and just the few content creators who are willing to pay the licensing fees, or who are sponsored by Wizards. Sure, Wizards has historically produced really good content, but then again, do you really just want the one choice? If Paizo and Pathfinder have taught us anything, it's that gaming is healthier and more fun when there's diversity and choice. Tales of the Valiant ensures that the 5e rule set remains open to everyone. There are no licensing fees. Anybody can create content for it with no fear of legal repercussion. That not only encourages a diverse pool of contributors, it ensures that there will be gaming content. There will be gaming content for it on drive through RPG, there will be gaming content all over the internet, just like there is now for 5e but there won't be for 6th edition. At the very least, Cobalt Press and probably other companies like Roll for Combat, who don't want to pay licensing fees to wizards, and I don't know why anyone would, will publish adventures, new monsters, spells, classes, and more for TOV. A game needs a community. Without fresh ideas and exciting new releases, a game languishes. Wizards of the Coast is closing its doors, locking people out of participation, but Tales of the Valiant is opening a new space for players and content creators alike. Reason 2. Games need adjustment. There's a lot about 5e I would change. I'd get rid of passive perception, I'd add a skill explicitly for picking locks finally and disarming traps, I'd add rules for climbing onto a larger creature during combat, I'd get rid of death saving throws, I'd scale back HP, I'd fix the CR system, that's just off the top of my head. Any longtime player of RPGs probably has even more great ideas, and Tales of the Valiant isn't going to do any of it. TOV isn't D&D 5.5, it's not advanced D&D, it's 5e in maintenance mode, allowing for minor adjustments here and there to make the game better for most modern gamers. 5e is a decade old at this point, and the way we game now is different than it was before. There are little things that require adjustment. Monster stat blocks could be improved so they're easier to reference for the game master. We can say lineage instead of race. We don't have to pretend to still care about the ideal bond flaw system that nobody uses, not even the Wizards of the Coast Adventures, really. There are quality of life adjustments we can make to the rule system without affecting how it works. They don't change the game, for better or for worse, but it makes the game a more pleasant place to hang out in. Wizards of the Coast isn't going to do that for 5e. They'll do whatever they need to do for 6th edition, and possibly until it becomes unrecognizable. Tales of the Valiant is going to make minor changes, just to keep it healthy. Reason 3. Independent Gaming Tales of the Valiant isn't about fixing 5e. It's about preserving the 5e rules and community. It's creating a space for the community that had formed around D&D 5th edition. If you're confident that Wizards of the Coast is going to continue to support 5th edition along with their digital first 6th edition, then you probably don't feel that your 5e hangout space is going to be affected. 
Personally, I don't do business with abusive companies, and Wizards of the Coast is that, and they cannot be trusted. I'm not going to sign up for 6th edition's digital tools, and I'm not going to purchase 6th edition products. I don't believe I'm being invited or have a place at a gaming table being run by Wizards of the Coast. TOV is doing a really good job of inviting people to its table, though. The core fantasy rules are openly licensed, so they'll be online, just like Pathfinder rules. The Tales of the Valiant books will fit nicely next to my other Cobalt Press books, like Deep Magic and Tome of Beasts, and the company producing it has threatened me with legal action well under zero times. In fact, on the contrary, Wolfgang Bauer once responded to a fan email I sent him about a Pathfinder book he wrote. He didn't have to do that. TOV is the future of 5e-style gaming. Just go to koboldpress.com and check out any of their amazing Midgard source books. The Southlands book is my personal favorite. I mean, I'm a sucker for Fantasy Egypt, and this one is a great implementation of it. It's a rich, rich land full of different cultures. It's so much fun to read about and so much fun to play in. Kobold Press is serious about fantasy RPG, and the 5e rules couldn't be in better hands, nor could the 5e community. If you haven't already, check out their work on Tales of the Valiant and join the community. Thanks for watching.